In today's video, we're going to discuss the Bush Pot Survival Kit and why it's probably one of the best options that I've seen for survival kits. And it's been around for a long time. Stick around, it's going to be a good video. Welcome back to the channel, Prepared Wanderer in my man cave and I wanted to go over a concept um, that I've been kind of studying recently and I wanted to share it with you guys. Now before we get in this video, remember this is going to be a two-part video. Today is part one and in part one we are going to discuss the Bush Pot Survival Kit that was really first um, I think developed by Moore's Kahansky. Um, if you're not familiar with Moore's, you need to look into his uh, teaching and writing, his books, and he even has videos um, out on YouTube. Uh, Moore's is no longer with us, but um, I consider him the godfather of modern bushcraft. Um, he did a lot of training in Canada with uh, Canadian um, search and rescue and Canadian military units and um, the the concepts that he has developed um, in his approach to things of just being very laid back and nonchalant about stuff and very practical um, and being very humble which is such a big thing these days because you don't see a lot of that um, with a lot of the modern survival instructors um, but Moore's is a humble humble guy and I've always really enjoyed his teachings, his writings, and his bush pot survival kit um, is such a great concept. And I wanted to do my take on it. So what I thought we'd do is we'd look at it today in studio so I can lay things out, look at things very closely and in depth. And then the next video, part two, which I'm hoping will be next week, We'll go out in the field and we will test some of this kit and see how it how it performs, how I'm going to carry it, what other items I may need with it. Is it going to be enough um, to do all the different tasks that we need? Because, of course, with survival, we're talking about um, water, shelter, first aid, navigation, tools. Those are all the different items. Um, that we hear over and over again through all the different systems that are out there. Uh, there are certain core items that you need and I've kind of chosen my core items out of my gear boxes and to put them into this kit and we're going to look at it. So I wanted to have some type of bag that would hold it all together. Um, that way if I'm throwing this into a backpack it's going to keep the backpack clean and you'll see why here in a second but also it gives me the ability to um, store some extra items but depending on the type of bag you have you can actually use it for collecting water and filtering pre-filtering water so if you have very dirty um, chunky water has stuff floating in it putting it in some type of bag nylon cotton canvas whatever it is um, as long as it's not waterproof, that water is going to seep through the seams and go into your bush pot, and that is a pre-filter. So um, it's a double duty item. This particular bag, I actually got this with a, one of my Weber grills years ago. It uh, contained the cover for the grill, and it came in this really nice stuff sack. So that's what I'm using today. But when we get into this thing, the bush pot really is the most important part and you see why. On top of my bush pot I have a very basic first aid kit. We'll go. Along the side of the pot in the bag um, is a cutting tool. Um, Moore's was a big fan of the Mora knife. Um, Mora knives are great because they are very um, inexpensive. Um, they're lightweight um, and the Scandi blades on these things are incredibly sharp. Uh, this is one that um, I, I received recently but really haven't used, but I like the design of it because it has that guard on it. We'll take a look at that a little bit closer, talk about specs on, on knives. So some kind of basic cutting tool uh, for all the obvious camp chores you're going to do. And then one thing that I've added to my kit um, that's a little bit different than what Morse teaches 
is I added just a small folding saw. Um, in his kit, um, he has a very uh, great idea about taking a bow saw blade and either putting that in wrap, you know, uh, twisting that and putting that inside your pot or inside of a leather belt. And then when you need it, you pull that out and you fashion yourself um, a buck saw. And of course, with a, um, a blade of that size, you're able to cut bigger, bigger, much bigger wood than I can with this. Um, but my thinking is I really don't need um, a huge saw because I'm not um, in the northern regions. I'm not in Canada where I need a lot of firewood. Um, I can get by with smaller stuff um, for an overnight um, to get me by just because of the weather that I'm in the area I'm operating in. So this little open L saw, I think, is going to be more useful to me than a big buck saw. Maybe wrong, but I think it's worth a try. And then here is the bush pot. Now, um, the bush pot uh, concept that Morse came up with, there was a company that called Open Country, I think they were, and they made an aluminum bush pot that was pretty close to this one. Um, they are no longer in business. They're not making this bush pots anymore, but what was nice about it is it was a good size pot. Um, it had folding butterfly handles, so you have something to grab onto. Um, it had a bale, so you can hang it over a fire. It had a lid with a little tab on it so you can get your lid off. And then more importantly, it had a pour spout. So um, these style of bush pots that Open Country was selling, uh, I think it was like maybe five, uh, six years ago, they stopped making these things, um, were fantastic pots. And um, they came in two different sizes. Um, this is the close to the bigger one that they had. Now this one is from uh, Self Reliance Outfitters. I've had it for a while. It's stainless steel. So actually, it's a good update to the aluminum one, even though it was an anodized aluminum. Um, you know, stainless steel, of course, is so much better for you health-wise, um, and it boils water fantastic. Now the size of this bush pot, um, I can't remember. I'll try to put a, a caption with while we're talking about this, what this size is. What's great about it is, um, from a concept point of view, is that everything um, that you need pretty much is in this kit, and the container that holds it is useful as well. It's just not a bag. Um, this is small enough that it will go into a small knapsack or backpack, so you could throw this in your day pack. Um, and have pretty much everything you need. So, um, like I said, I pulled this stuff out of my gear boxes of different things that I had. I think the first thing that um, is important is some type of way of uh, controlling um, your temperature if you're wet and cold. So a, a Mylar thermal blanket, of course, is uh, an industry standard. You know, most survival kits have some type of uh, blanket or tarp like this. This one um, I've had for a while. I've never taken it out of the package, but it's kind of interesting because it is, of course, bright orange, um, but it has instructions on how to set it up in different ways with ski poles, with uh, um, just different uh, configuration. So it's kind of unique in that sense. And it's a little bit bigger than the standard small pocket mylar blankets that you see. So this way I can create a wind block. I can wrap myself up in it um, and stay warm if I have to. Next um, is cordage. Cordage uh, is always difficult to make and it's labor intensive in the field um, if you know doing it with natural fibers so having some kind of cordage that's man-made and ready to go um, bank line is lightweight and small you can put bring a lot of it with you uh, so I have a, a hunk of it here and then I also have some 550 cord just because uh, it's nice to have the inner strands of that um, I think you know you can always have more cordage. You, know, you, never, you can never have enough. So this may even not be quite enough. It's certainly enough to, to build a shelter, but that's probably about it. 
Next item um, in my kit um, is a couple of uh, food nutrition type items. Um, these are really for um, keeping morale up, but also um, helping with, uh, you know, controlling your body temperature. So you're heating water, you should be, and if it's cold out, you're going to drink some warm water. So soup, of course, is a great thing that gets your core temperature up. So these little cup of soup packets that you can get at the store from Lipton are a great source. They, they have some noodles in it, so there's a little bit of carb carbohydrates in it and some protein. And then what I like to do is um, is carry some chicken bouillon cubes. I can add that to the soup or I can just drink those alone and um, they're going to be, they're going to fill me up. They're going to make me feel great. They're going to warm me up. Um, coffee packets of some instant coffee. This is more of a morale booster. Of course, caffeine is a diuretic, so you have to be careful with these, but um, these could do a lot um, for morale if you have to spend the night in the woods, waking up in the morning, having a cup of coffee. It's not a bad thing. And then um, some of the liquid IVs uh, just to add to water, uh, to make the water taste better, but also to help with um, electrolytes. Next, and I don't know if this is, maybe this is not a necessary item. I don't know. I'm, I'm always kind of torn with these. This is a pocket fishing kit. Um, this one came from, I believe, BCB. Um, and then what I've done is I've added stuff to it. Uh, so we have um, some liters, sinkers in there. Um, I've added a can opener just because it's, it's small, it's flat, it works pretty well. So let's throw that in there. Uh, this little container has um, some bigger sinkers. Uh, there are some lures in here as well. It's something that I put together. There's a little, a little grub with a jig head on it, small hook. So we're not talking about big fishing equipment, but we are talking about small stuff. Um, these are some of these little bait eggs that you can put on the end of a hook. A bobber. Um, you don't need a very big bobber, but a bobber is pretty handy to have. And of course some fishing line. This is, I believe, spider wire or something similar to that. That's got a hook already attached to it. And then um, I've got like a little, little fat minnow. Uh, a repair item is handy. This is, uh, I believe, Kevlar cord. Um, it's very thin, it's almost like a thread, kind of uh, very similar to like an upholstery thread, that kind of diameter or thickness. And then I've just got a couple different needles in here and um, some safety pins. So if I need to repair some items, you know, my clothing or whatever, I can do that, certainly. Another item, of course, is duct tape, very multifunctional. Um, I like this bright orange roll just because, um, you know, if I'm truly in a situation where I want to be found, um, a signal mirror um, can be a pretty handy item, um, depending on where you're at. If you're in the woods, uh, it may not be as handy. You need to be out in a, more of an open area, and you need to have some sun if you're actually going to be signaling to air rescue. A candle um, can really be a fantastic item. Um, you know, if you have brush that you're trying to start a fire with and you're having some trouble with it, you can light this, put it under there, and then uh, that heat uh, will heat up the, the, the area underneath it, and it's just a little bit easier to get things going. Plus, if you're building any kind of shelter, these can actually raise the temperature to a, to a certain extent. So it's a, it's a multifunctional item. Um, it's a great item to have, and they really don't weigh much, so having a tea candle or a couple of them in your pack or in your gear I think is a great idea. Um, I decided to also put waterproof matches. Maybe overkill, um, but, uh, you know, they're pretty handy in wet conditions. Uh, they get wet, they can be relit, and then you can find these anywhere. And This is a nice container. This is from UCO. They have one of the better containers out there. 
And then of course the ferro rod. Um, ferro rods sometimes are kind of controversial and some people find them to be unnecessary if you have a lighter, but lighters do fail and ferro rods really don't. Um, I've never seen one fail anyway. They always do what they're supposed to do. Now this one, I can't really tell you uh, where to go get this one because I don't think this is made anymore, but it's an interesting ferro rod because it has uh, this striker that goes in the handle. And that I believe is, uh, it's probably, it's, I think that's just steel, that, but it has a sharpened 90 degree, it's a, it's a square on the end, so there's 90 degrees all the way around. Um, you have your traditional ferro seam rod, but also this handle is magnesium. So if I wanted to shave that down and use that to get a fire started, I could. Um, but, you know, pretty decent sparks. Um, it's a nice ferro rod. Um, I wish they made these again, but I don't, I don't think they're in business anymore. And um, I've had mine for quite a while. So there's that. Um, bailing wire, picture hanging wire, uh, floral wire, of course you can do, you know, trapping with, but this type of wire, this picture hanging wire, to me, is very handy for repairs, um, lashing stuff, um, it, it, it does come in handy, and I always carry like a hunk of that with me. Um, some kind of light source, uh, a headlamp in particular is very handy and the old Petzl e-light um, is one of the smallest um, nicest little headlamps that I've I've been able to find um, it has several functions there's a strobe bright there's dim and there's even a red light function so headlamps in survival kits and in wilderness kits um, are are fantastic much better than a flashlight you don't need a flashlight um, but uh, you can you always use a headlamp for hands-free working in the dark when you're especially when you're starting fires or setting up shelters. Land navigation, uh, a basic compass, and a whistle are important. Uh, so we have our signaling with our whistle, and then we have a very basic com uh, compass. This is uh, I think by Brutton. Used to have a thermometer down here, but that kind of fell out and broke. So, but the compass still works, and it's just all this is going to do is give me some cardinal directions. I'm not going to do a lot of heavy land nav with this, um, but this may help me uh, figure out at least which way I'm going if I know a certain direction that I need to go. And then having some type of tinder that is man-made that I know is going to light every single time because when it is wet. In the woods, it can be difficult to get a fire going. Um, and Black and White Fire Starters Company, uh, I've done a lot of reviews on in the past uh, of their product. They're on Etsy. They have a lot of cool kind of man-made tenders that they put together. But this little tin of theirs has um, these wax. If I can get it out here. These little wax pads. Um, so peel one of these off cut it open, fluff it up, hit it with a spark, you will get a fire going like lickety split. So having a stack of those um, is always going to ensure that um, I have the ability to make a fire. And then we have a bandana, cotton bandana. Lots of things can be done with that, of course. Um, but always good to have a cotton bandana and an orange one just helps it. You can use it as a flag to signal, but also you won't lose it if you drop it on the ground. So these are the items I chose for my bush pot kit. Um, you know, everybody's a little bit different and will have different opinions of what's what they find are important. Of course, people are going to say you need to add more stuff, you need more shelter material. Um, certainly there are things that can be stuffed into this bag and into my backpack 
Contractor trash bags are fantastic for building shelters. I could put in a small nylon tarp, like a five by eight, um, uh, you know, a, a sit pad or kneeling pad, ground cloth, um, painter's tarp, plastic painter's tarp to create a shelter with that. Those are all items. So the the key of this video is not to say this is what you have to have and this is my recommendation and I'm the expert and I'm telling you how to do this. That's not the way I operate. Um, I'm learning with you guys all the time and the best way to learn is to load up some stuff and then go try it out and see what works and over time this will evolve it'll change it, my stuff my gear is always changing i'm always finding new things getting inspired by other people out there there's so many great people with great information um so you know go out and try this stuff and see what works for you um there's no reason to carry teeny tiny little survival kits um, if you have a backpack if you have a, a good knapsack um, there's no reason not to carry something like this, like a bush pot. And then the only thing you really need to add um, to this that's super important is some type of water container. Um, you know, a stainless steel water bottle, of course, is a great addition to your kit because you can use it over a fire. As always, thank you so much for watching my videos. Um, please check out the affiliate links down below. There'll be a link to my Amazon store with some of these items in it if you're interested in them. Um, also a link to my webpage, um, preparedwanderer.com. Um, that's just my blog site. And then the Facebook group, um, it is huge. Tons of people on it. A lot of good information, people sharing their stuff and what they do. And I post extra content on there as well. So check all that stuff out. That always helps the channel. Um, please leave a comment down below. And if you like this content, please consider subscribing. That helps me out. And we'll see you next time out in the field with the Prepared Wanderer. Thanks for watching.